talk about present day America. And we must speak about our present day economy. And we must talk about our present day warmongering. And we must talk about present day greed. And we must talk about our present day priorities. And we must talk about present day complicities. We live in a wild wilderness in this day, just as John and Jesus did 2,000 years ago. If we bring John's words nearer to home today, then we may find unexpected parallels between the biblical narrative and our present day. For instance, I am struck. In fact, I was more than struck this week. I was haunted by these parallels. By this image of the wild man living in the wilderness, the voice in the wilderness crying out, and all of those voices out there in the wildernesses of urban America and the world who are crying out these days. I am struck, dumbstruck even, by the parallels of the man living out in the woods, John, who I'm sure most respectful citizens of the ancient world thought was a little odd, who was calling out for the world to repent, to turn itself around, and the parallel of all of these people living in tents, in our city's parks, calling out for the world to repent of greed and corruption. I am dumbstruck by how dumb I can be sometimes that this parallel has been staring me in the face for months now and it took Advent's Advent to get me to see it. I was talking with Julia this week, our youth and ministry, youth and family ministries director, about this very thing, about Advent, Advent, and what Advent means. Julia said, well, we tend to think Advent is easy. Show up at church, light some candles, sing some Advent songs, sing some carols, wait for the baby Jesus to be born. We don't wrestle with much during Advent, not the way we do in, in Lent. But it seems, it seems this year, if we do not keep John locked away 2,000 years ago, but if we allow the voices in the wilderness, in our very present day wilderness, to pierce our holiday glazed over candy coated shop till you drop reality, maybe we will find that God is trying to occupy our Advent this year. Maybe we will listen to the voices calling out in our wildernesses today as humanly flawed as those voices may be, maybe we will listen for the good news in what they have to say and insist then on preparing the way for the Lord, the way lived by Jesus of mercy and of justice and of peace. Maybe we won't just give lip service to those things this Advent, but maybe we will really do it. Really create a world that reflects the kingdom of God. And so I ask you this morning, on this first Sunday of Advent, in the season of anticipation and preparation, of waiting and of wanting, in the season of renewed hope. What are you really hoping for? And if God is trying to occupy our Advent this year, 
What does that mean for you? And what are you going to do about it? Amen.